the heat hung heavy in the late Texas evening as Joe Thompson adjusted his collar, catching a glimpse of Mary in the reflection of the rearview mirror. Her lips curled with an excitement he hadn't seen in a long time. Tonight, they were heading to the McLaren's party, an annual gathering that was usually light-hearted, a place for small talk and laughter. But tonight felt different. Mary's energy bordered on restless anticipation, her eyes gleaming with a spark Joe couldn't quite place. As they pulled out of the driveway of their modest suburban home, the quiet of the neighborhood wrapped around them, each house lined neatly along their block. They lived in a conservative town where neighbors knew one another, and reputations were built and upheld with fervent pride. Joe took pride in his reputation too. His hard work and dedication to family were his cornerstones, his moral compass finely tuned. Their three children, Jenny, Rachel, and Joey, were reminders of why he held on to these values with such devotion. And for a long time, he thought Mary shared this vision. But tonight, as she adjusted her lipstick for the third time and grinned at him with a distant look in her eyes, he sensed the chasm he hadn't noticed before. She had become more evasive lately, slipping out of conversations with a coy smile or changing the topic when he prodded her about her restlessness. The cheerful, grounded woman he had married seemed to be slipping away, replaced by someone he struggled to recognize. Excited for tonight, he asked, trying to catch her gaze. Very, she replied with an enthusiasm that sounded rehearsed. Her eyes flitted toward him, holding his gaze for a heartbeat before turning back to her reflection. What's got you so energized, he pressed, his voice light but laced with curiosity. Oh, just, you'll see, she said, her tone mysterious, as if harboring a secret he wasn't privy to. She laughed softly, but Joe could sense a strange tension beneath it one that left him more unsettled with each mile closer to the McLarens. As they pulled into the McLarens' driveway, Joe felt a pang of unease. The house glowed against the night, lights streaming through large windows, and laughter drifted toward them as they made their way up the path. Mary's excitement, however, was palpable, she had dressed up more than usual, her eyes bright and eager. Joe followed her in, feeling like he was on the edge of something he couldn't yet define but was beginning to dread. The McLaren's house was filled with familiar faces, couples from their small, tight-knit community. Yet, as the evening progressed, Joe sensed something off. The conversations seemed hushed, loaded with meanings he couldn't decode, and Mary drifted from him frequently, laughing more with the others than with him. He found himself nursing his drink in a corner, watching her with a mixture of confusion and unease. And as the night deepened, Joe's unease grew, heightened by the way Mary mingled, whispering with some of the other wives, laughing at jokes he wasn't privy to. He felt increasingly like an outsider, tethered only by his commitment to her and his family. Little did he know, this party would pull at the very seams of that commitment, testing his resolve and laying bare the truth behind Mary's evasiveness and excitement. The evening wore on, with Joe making his rounds in the McLaren spacious living room, exchanging pleasantries with friends and colleagues. He tried to relax, but Mary's odd behavior nagged at him. She moved with a freedom he wasn't used to, her laughter floating through the room louder than he remembered. It felt like she was part of a different world here, and he was merely a spectator. As the clock neared midnight, the lights dimmed, and a hushed excitement filled the air. Joe noticed Mary smiling widely, her gaze flickering toward the McLarens, who stood at the center of the room, calling for everyone's attention. All right, folks, Mr. McLaren began, his voice carrying a hint of mischief. We have a little game for tonight, something to add a bit of thrill to our evening. Joe watched, increasingly wary, as Mrs. McLaren held out a crystal bowl filled with keys. One by one, the women began to drop their keys inside, casting glances around the room. Some were playful, others coy, but all seemed to understand the implications behind the ritual. Joe felt his pulse quicken as the meaning of the scene dawned on him. This is for those of you looking to have a little, excitement, Mrs. McLaren continued, her tone a mix of charm and provocation. Each husband will pick a key, and whoever's key they pull will be their partner for the rest of the evening. Joe's gaze snapped to Mary, his stomach twisting. She looked at him with a daring sparkle in her eye, her key already tossed into the bowl. 
What's going on here, Mary? he asked, his voice low, though the anger in his words barely contained itself. He felt the betrayal settle like a rock in his chest, heavy and unyielding. Oh, don't be so uptight, Joe, she replied, a sly smile on her lips. It's just a bit of fun. Everyone here does it. It's harmless, really. Harmless, he repeated, his voice rising a notch. You thought I'd just go along with this? She touched his arm, her smile slipping slightly. Joe, come on. You never want to try anything new. This is one night, one chance to feel a little excitement. He pulled his arm away, his expression darkening as the betrayal settled deeper. The conservative values that had bound their marriage and family seemed mocked in this room of whispers and veiled laughter. And Mary, standing before him, was no longer the woman he thought he'd known. Excitement? This is what you're willing to risk our family for? His voice was now more than a whisper, cutting through the murmured conversations around them. The room grew quiet as heads turned toward them, eyes watching the tension between husband and wife. Joe felt humiliated, trapped in the judgmental stares of friends and neighbors. But he would not be silent. Reaching forward, he fished out Mary's key from the bowl and held it up for everyone to see. I won't participate in this, he announced, his voice strong and resolute. This is an excitement. It's betrayal. And I don't stand for that. Mary's face flushed with anger and embarrassment as whispers circulated through the crowd. Joe turned on his heel, the weight of his decision pressing down on him. He didn't look back, his mind racing with the implications of what had just happened. The night, meant to be a simple party, had unveiled the widening rift between them, leaving their marriage in question and his trust in shreds. The drive home was shrouded in a silence that felt like a storm waiting to break. Joe's hands gripped the steering wheel, his jaw clenched as he replayed the scene from the party in his mind. Mary, still fuming from the humiliation she felt, sat beside him, arms crossed, staring out the window. When they reached their driveway, Joe barely put the car in park before Mary's frustration erupted. Why did you have to make a scene, Joe? She hissed, her voice laced with anger. You embarrassed me in front of everyone. I just wanted one night to feel different. He turned to face her, disbelief coloring his features. Embarrassed you? You think that's what this is about? He shook his head, letting the frustration seep into his words. Mary, you're asking me to ignore everything we built. Our values, our commitment. And for what? To play some game with strangers? She scoffed, rolling her eyes. You always do this, acting like everything is so black and white. Life isn't that simple, Joe. I'm tired of feeling, trapped. Trapped? The word tasted bitter in his mouth. I work day and night so we can live comfortably. I thought that was what you wanted. I thought you were happy. Her gaze faltered, her voice softening as she admitted, I don't want to be that perfect little wife anymore. I need something more than just routines and roles. Joe's anger flared at her words. And so your answer is to throw away our marriage in a room full of strangers? He laughed bitterly. You call that more? Mary sighed, frustration lining her features. If you can't see how stifling this life is, then maybe we're not on the same page anymore. Tonight was a chance for us to try something new, something exciting. But you, you always hold back. Joe stared at her, a thousand words he wanted to say, but the weight of betrayal was too thick to cut through. The woman he had loved, the mother of his children, was barely recognizable in this moment. The realization that she was willing to risk everything for a night of so-called freedom burned in his chest like an unquenchable flame. Silence returned as they both withdrew, lost in their own thoughts, each word they had spoken hanging heavy between them. He knew this went beyond tonight, beyond the party, it was the culmination of years of emotional distance and unspoken grievances, unraveling in the most painful way. Joe got out of the car and walked into the house, heading straight for the quiet solitude of their bedroom, leaving Mary standing alone in the driveway. He closed the door behind him, feeling the weight of what had transpired pressing down on him, suffocating and unbearable. 
In the silence, he came to terms with a painful truth, the foundation of his marriage had crumbled, and there might be no going back. Joe sat on the edge of their bed, staring at the door as he heard Mary's soft footsteps approaching. The weight of her betrayal pressed down on him, an ache that wouldn't lessen. She entered the room, her expression defiant, as if challenging him to break the silence. For a moment, they stared at each other in a charged stillness, the air thick with unspoken accusations. Finally, Joe spoke, his voice low but hard. If that's the life you want, Mary, a life where vows don't matter, where excitement means breaking trust, then maybe you don't belong here. She recoiled as if he had struck her, but her defiance quickly returned. I didn't ask for your permission to feel alive, Joe. I'm tired of being tied down by your rules, your principles. For once, I wanted to make my own choice. Make your own choice? His voice rose, each word sharpening into anger. Is that what this was about? You think it's freedom to throw away everything we've built? He pointed toward the door, his eyes blazing with pain and fury. If that's what you call life, then go on. Walk out of here right now and take that so-called freedom. But don't expect to come back. Mary's face twisted with anger. Fine, she spat, her voice trembling. If that's what it takes, then maybe I will. Maybe you're the one who's held me back all these years, Joe. I didn't think I'd have to beg my husband for a moment of freedom. Joe laughed, a bitter sound that echoed through the room. Freedom? That's what you call it. His hands clenched into fists. This isn't about freedom, Mary. It's about respect, about loyalty. Things you threw away without a second thought. Mary's expression faltered, her confidence waning under the weight of his words. Maybe, maybe we're just too different, Joe. You and your rules, me and my dreams of something more. Maybe we've been lying to ourselves. Joe felt something inside him break as she spoke. The reality he'd held onto, the life he'd believed in, was slipping away, piece by painful piece. Standing, he looked down at her with a calmness that was colder than any anger. If that's what you think, then go, he said, his voice devoid of warmth. Walk out of here, go back to the party, and live the life you think you want. But don't expect me, or this family, to be here waiting. Mary's face paled as his words sank in. She blinked, her anger replaced by hesitation. For a moment, she looked at him as if searching for the man she'd once known, but his expression was unyielding, his resolve set like stone. Joe, she whispered, but the words died on her lips as he turned away, leaving her standing alone. Without another word, he left the room, walking down the hallway, his footsteps echoing in the silence. He reached the front door, pulling it open and stepping outside, the night air cold against his skin. His chest heaved, each breath filled with the bitter taste of betrayal. As he reached his car, he looked back at the house one last time, feeling the finality of his choice settle over him. Mary had made her decision, now he was making his. The life he had once cherished, the family he had devoted himself to, was over. And in its place was a determination that burned brighter than any pain he felt. The days that followed were a blur of anger and planning. Joe barely spoke to Mary, his silence louder than any argument. At night, he slept in the guest room, his back turned against a life he was ready to leave behind. But each quiet hour only fueled his resolve, he knew what he had to do. Joe began collecting evidence, text messages, calls, and even the voicemail Mary had left him in her half-hearted attempt to explain her actions. Each piece confirmed what he already knew, Mary had not only broken his trust but had also willingly embraced a lifestyle that disrespected everything he held dear. One afternoon, he met with an old friend, Mike, who worked as a journalist for the local paper. Joe knew that a scandal this big would shake their small, conservative town to its core. He laid out the entire story, explaining the party, the key-swapping game, and Mary's willingness to betray their marriage. Mike listened, his expression grim, and agreed to expose the hidden underbelly of their seemingly pristine community. The next step was to secure his family's future. Joe consulted with a lawyer, gathering every scrap of evidence he had to build a case against Mary. He was determined to gain full custody of their children, protect his finances, 
and ensure that Mary's reckless choices wouldn't harm the stability he had worked so hard to create for his kids. A few days later, the story broke in the local paper. The article painted a vivid picture of the swinger culture within the town, and while it didn't name every participant, the McLaren's infamous party was central to the scandal. Whispers of outrage and shock rippled through the community. Mary, along with a few others, found herself at the center of attention in the worst possible way. The fallout was swift and brutal. Friends who had once been close distanced themselves, disapproving glances followed Mary wherever she went, and she soon realized that her moment of freedom had come at a steep cost. Joe watched it all unfold with a quiet satisfaction, knowing that she was beginning to face the consequences of her choices. With the divorce proceedings underway, Joe stood resolute, his case ironclad. In the courtroom, he presented his evidence, the messages, voicemails, and photos, proving Mary's infidelity. The judge listened, nodding in agreement as Joe made his case. By the time the hearing ended, Joe had won full custody of their children and protected his assets, leaving Mary with only the bare minimum. As he walked out of the courthouse, a weight lifted off his shoulders. He knew that his life was changed forever, but in the silence of his victory, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. He had stood up for himself, for his values, and for his children, carving a path forward that he could finally believe in. After the courtroom victory, Joe's mind still buzzed with a need for closure. The scandal's impact had spread, but he felt there was more to be done. His friend Mike had hinted that the story could be expanded, with deeper details about the people involved in the lifestyle. Inspired by the thought, Joe decided to go further, ensuring that everyone who had turned their lives into a mockery of marriage faced real accountability. Joe began compiling a dossier of evidence, not just against Mary, but against the other prominent couples in town who had participated in the secret lifestyle. He knew well enough that his actions would stir even more scandal and bring down several powerful families, but he was beyond caring. For too long, they had lived in shadows, tarnishing the values they publicly championed. With every document, photo, and message Mike published, the town's hypocrisy was laid bare. Soon, a series of exposés hit the headlines, leaving the community reeling. Local businesses tied to those involved began to suffer as clients withdrew. Schools began receiving calls from concerned parents questioning the values upheld by some families. Joe watched as the walls closed in on those who had mocked the sanctity of their relationships. For Mary, the consequences were brutal and unforgiving. Her attempts to find a job in town met with outright rejection, no one wanted to be associated with her. Even former friends who had once encouraged her freedom abandoned her, afraid of tarnishing their own reputations further. Joe had ensured that Mary's actions would follow her wherever she went in town, a constant reminder of the choices she had made. As for Joe, he began rebuilding his life, focusing on his children and the stability they needed. The respect he garnered in the community grew, as neighbors and friends saw him as a man who had taken a stand against betrayal and hypocrisy. He moved forward with renewed strength, each day a step away from the pain that Mary's actions had caused. Months later, as Joe walked through the town square, he saw Mary sitting alone on a bench, her gaze vacant, shoulders slumped. He paused for a moment, catching her eye. She looked up, desperation etched in her face as if silently pleading for forgiveness or an acknowledgement of some kind. But Joe felt nothing but a deep, unshakable resolve. He turned away, leaving her with the reality she had chosen, a life in the shadows of the choices she had made. With every step he took, Joe knew he had secured the justice he sought, not just for himself, but for the principles he believed in. And as he left the square that day, he felt an undeniable sense of closure, a fitting end to the story he had once thought would never find peace.